Hello, my name is Anna Darden. I'm so pleased you can join me today for Simple Confident Cooking. Um, today we're working with roasted chicken and three ways to use it after you've roasted the chicken. We're gonna do um, chicken tortilla soup, chicken pot pie, and then we're also gonna do chicken salad sandwiches. We have a gorgeous studio audience. Thank you for being and uh, we're gonna get busy cooking. So um, chicken is one of my favorite things to do on a Sunday because it's so easy to put it in the oven, go along with your business, and then pull it out and have it ready and steaming hot, gorgeous for dinner. And um, this one I roasted yesterday, it looked much more beautiful then, I promise you. <laughs> um, came from work, so it's a little cold from the refrigerator. But it's so easy to roast a chicken. All you do is get a whole chicken. Um, it's worth the money to get an organic, um, free range chicken and a lot of times they'll come with the giblets in the middle. Um, if you're a vegetarian, stay with me because the three things we're making work very well for vegetarians as well. <laughs> You'll have to go through the meat course for just a second. And um, so anyway, we'll have our chicken here and basically what you're going to do is use some sort of an oil or a butter. A clarified butter works really well because it doesn't have as high, it doesn't have the salt content in there so it doesn't burn as easily. And then you're just going to rub this chicken with your spices. This one is with some chipotle and cumin and a little bit of more um, Mexican spices. And the ones that I made here, these ones have just a really simple salt and pepper. So without any further ado, let's start cooking. <laughs> um, we're gonna... Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is our chicken tortilla soup. And um, of course, the base to that is that we're gonna be sauteing some onions and our peppers. So I'm gonna get those going real quick and then I'm going to show you, I'm starting with uh, one of my favorite olive oils. This is from California. When you get olive oil, you wanna be sure to get extra virgin and make sure yeah, it virgin. actually is <laughs> uh, olive oil. <laughs> and um, a lot of olive oils that you'll find that are generically branded are actually corn or other generically uh, generic oils. And so you really wanna get a pure olive oil. And so, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some sauteing of onions. And this is about one large onion. So I'll throw him in here and get that going. While the onion is going, we're gonna do our garlic here. And with your garlic, uh, they're so easy. I'm sure <laughs> most people have bought the um, little devices to like take the skins off your garlic. It's so easy to do it without, and I kind of get annoyed with the extra dishes. So just use your knife and squish it flat. And um, that just takes, um, especially when you're gonna chop it anyway, it just takes the skin right off. And then there you have it. And then you have one last dish to do and a really easy garlic to use. So I'm gonna do a couple cloves of garlic in here. And in addition to that, we're gonna get our peppers going too. So I'm just gonna save this here and chop it up while I do my peppers. There's this fantastic trick to cutting a bell pepper. And I'm gonna show you what it is. So probably when you cut it, you usually go right in the middle. And then you have really awkward corners to cut and it's kind of not very fun. Here's what you do. Go along the sides of your, your top here. And we're gonna go straight down each of these sides. And then we have four much cleaner surfaces to work with. Um, so it's gonna be a lot easier to get really even segments and a lot faster because you don't have to pull out as many of the seeds. By the way, if you don't see seeds in your bell pepper, that should be deeply disturbing to you. It means that somebody has been uh, hugely modifying its parent. And <laughs> so look for some healthy ones. Okay. Onions are coming along really well here. How do they look? They look beautiful. They're just kind of getting a little camera? bit gone here. Let me show here. And the, the, and the studio audience. Um, I'm going to let them go a little bit longer until they get kind of a deep brown. Yeah, brown. So with the peppers, um, you're just going to kind of cut even segments <laughs> here. And then... Um, you can use green peppers for this. I like the red and yellow because they have just a little bit of sweetness. Mm. And then just gather them up and it's really easy to have all of your little bits all done together. So we'll toss those guys in there too. And 
Earlier I cut up some red peppers and some uh, two poblanos. So right now I have one onion going and one yellow pepper. I'm gonna add in here one red pepper and two poblano chilies. Mm. And so poblanos have a little bit of that green pepper, but also a little bit more spiciness. It's kind of a more unique flavor, so it adds a nice dimension. And um, the next thing we're gonna add in for our peppers is a jalapeno. So depending on how spicy you like it to be, same thing as with a bell pepper. You can cut just down on the sides to avoid all of those little seeds in the middle. And so I'll do that for, for now and because I'm going to add some more hot pepper, the dried peppers. And so same thing, I'll just throw away that little bit here. And um, the seeds and the stems are generally the hottest part of a pepper. So if you don't like it quite as spicy, uh, it's real easy to eliminate that. So, and then we'll just chop these all up together and toss them right in. Great. Everybody following so far? That's oh, for you. Yeah. You can do that, right? You can chop a couple yeah. peppers and garlic. Okay, great. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need to use a garlic press or anything. Just give it a nice chop. It'll cook down here. This is one of my favorite soups to do when I am um, especially a little bit under the weather because um, it has that nice chicken broth and it. it feels like a chicken chicken noodle soup, you know? Um, but the spiciness kind of opens up everything and makes you just feel really refreshed. Okay, so we're gonna go with some spices. And I'm gonna do some cumin, that's a really important one here. And um, it should be really flavorful and have a beautiful amber color. And I'm going to put in a probably almost a fourth a cup in here. So let me show you how that's looking right now. Can you see that at home? I can um, down it. <laughs> there. Okay. Good. Yes. So that's how oh, we're going. It's a cool and, um, So the onions are completely translucent now, and then the peppers also are getting to be a really nice translucent color. Um, sometimes I'll add in some other uh, peppers. So this is a chipotle, and I also have a pasilla pepper. So that's gonna add a little bit of a smoky hot hotness to them. And so I'll throw these in here real quick. I'm mean, putting maybe a tablespoon of each. Um, I like it a little bit spicy. If you don't like it as spicy, you don't have to put it in. <laughs> and okay, so that's smelling good. Can you smell yes, it? it? Yeah, so great. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, okay, so the next thing we're gonna add in is some um, tomato sauce. Um, during the summer months, I would definitely use fresh tomato for this, but at this time of the year, um, we don't have very great ones available, so then it's much better to use a canned. Um, I like the San Marzano. They work really well. Let me put that back here. And then the other thing we're going to add in is black beans. So if you're vegetarian, skip the chicken and just go straight to the black beans. And we'll put those in too. And then, of course, the next thing we're going to add in is our chicken. It's going good. Mm -hmm. And let me grab my chicken. Okay. Is, there, is there a particular kind of black beans you prefer? Um, you know, it's great to make them from scratch. They're so easy to do, but I'm, I think pretty much any, any canned black beans work really well. And um, so, I, I like the ones that are not too salted. <laughs> Get like a low sodium one because then you can add in your own salt. And um, I, I usually take off the broth and just leave the beans there. Even give them a quick rinse so you just have the beans to work with. So with your chicken, just give it a little chop and we'll just throw that right in. in there. And I'm just using one of my chicken breasts here. By the way, when I was preparing for the show and I went to um, purchase my chickens, uh, it cost exactly the same to buy two breasts as it does to buy an entire bird. So you have so many more things that you can do if you're using the entire chicken. So I think it's a really great thing to do. Um, you can choose to use the skin or not use the skin. It's a little bit chewy, so you might want to not include it. I so. <laughs> I, well, so my family's not scared of it, so <laughs> we'll put some of each in here. And just give it a nice little chop. Okay. 
And then we're gonna add our broth in. You could also add some water in if you're a vegetarian or a vegetarian stock. And then make sure that you have um, a good amount of salt. I'm uh, My broth is fairly salty, so I don't really need to add too much salt at this point. That's why I like to do homemade broths. And so, okay, it's looking good. And like we went over last week with the broth, um, sometimes if you're making it from scratch at home, you're gonna have this, um, you're gonna have this little um, bit of fat that settles on the top. Good That's stuff. okay, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, don't be scared of it. You can just scoop it to the side if you want to, or you can just put you it see, in. You can yep. The, the Whatever you like to do. So I'm just going to go right in with this one. Oh, go right in. Yeah, go right in. Great, so then that one's good. And put that aside. Okay, and now that's going good. And that's pretty much all we need to do. Now we're just going to wait and have it cook down a little bit. So while that's going, let's, um, let's get started on our next thing that we're gonna do. So we'll set this aside for a minute and we'll just keep on going. Salad, salad, uh, if I could get salad, my... Salad. Lovely Shelly. Shelly? Yes, <laughs> um, if you want to um, keep this cooking on the, on the side and then I'll um, grab it in a minute. Would that be okay? So I'll pass on this one here. <laughs> and, and I'll just pass this over to you and I'll switch burners real quick. Minor transition, just a moment. I'll give you this one. I need and help <laughs> in getting this lit. Didier. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is our um, chicken pot pie. Well, that's, that's not the best pot for it, but... Okay, and we're going to start out just exactly the same way as we did um, last mo month when we did our roux. So it's the same, same start. We're going to go with um, equal parts of butter and flour. And so, got about two tablespoons of butter here, and then we're gonna uh, one second. What what milk. kind of butter was that? Bluegrass, oh. my favorite. Bluegrass. Is it, is it salted or unsalted? It's unsalted butter. Sponsor. I always stick with my unsalted sponsor. butter. Sponsor her now. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you can kind of move your butter around if you want to um, help it to melt a little bit quicker. And we're going to use, um, so basically what we're just doing right now is we're making a white sauce, just like we did for the macaroni and cheese last month. And so we've got our butter melting here really nicely. And if you want to, you can take it off the heat so it doesn't get overly heated. So I'm going to take that off here really quick. And at this point, We'll add in equal parts of flour. So I have about two tablespoons of butter and we'll add in just about the same for flour. And you just wanna have a nice uh, thick consistency in your roux. Let's see, we'll add in just a tad more. Okay, that looks pretty good. Good, that's a nice consistency there. And then we're going to add in some milk. So you can do about one cup of milk for every uh, two tablespoons equal parts flour and butter or whatever fat that you're using at the moment. And stir off the heat first so that you get all these little lumps incorporated before you put all the uh, milk in there so you have a nice smooth base. So we'll stir this up for a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now we have a really smooth base here, and we're going to just keep adding in a little bit more milk and, um, and add it back onto our heat. So I'll turn this back on for a minute. And again, you want to do maybe a medium heat, medium high heat, uh, not too high, and always be careful to keep stirring with milk because it'll burn very easily. And um, if you have kind of a whoops coil at home, coil burners, so, um, you'll want to do probably like a six setting, six or seven setting. OK, 
Okay. Always stir. Always be stirring. Always be stirring. Thank you, husband. Is, the, yes. is that whole milk? <laughs> Anna, is that whole milk? It is whole milk. That's how I get my girlish figure. That's how <laughs> straight from the cows. During the cows sit and anoint it's in rum Sonoma. I love it. So so is what kind of milk is that? Who, who's the purveyor? It's um, St. Benoit. Please. I don't know if I is said it that well. Is it de milk of Sonoma? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so as that's going along, um, you know, salt and pepper, you hear, see every recipe adds salt and pepper to taste. Um, I think that's not necessarily the case because it really depends on your recipe and I feel like pepper gets a little overused. In this case, I love to use pepper. I actually use this really cheap one from um, Trader Joe's because it has like a in, in one on here. It really is, it's like $2. And I actually like it better than the really expensive, you know, $80, $100 ones. I feel like it works just as well. I'm just saying, I like it. So you don't have to spend a lot, but using fresh ground pepper as opposed to just pre-ground pepper, the taste is infinitely different. Um, my brother-in-law well, used to tease me when we were in college, and he'd always say whenever we went to restaurants, I'd always say, can I please have fresh ground pepper? And so we, I never will outlive that. Thank you, Mackenzie. And, <laughs> but it's funny because I still today, I'm so passionate about it. I'm like, no, I need to have really good pepper here, please. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is just add in a lot of your roots. So we're going to do some celery that's pre-chopped. This is about maybe two cups. And um, you can see our sauce is just bubbling, so I'm going to turn the heat off. And we probably don't even need all of it. We'll just do a little bit of that. A little bit of carrots, and this is maybe a cup of carrots, a little more than that. Healthy cut. And then if you want to, if you were doing this vegetarian, um, mushroom and potato is fabulous to do with this. And um, since this is a chicken pot pie, we're going to add in some chicken. <laughs> and let me grab, oh, here. So what exactly is happening to the sauce right now? I'm adding in the Is it getting richer? <laughs> Thicker? <laughs> it's getting nice and cool. Um, mushrooms and potatoes. Just a question. Right now. Yeah. And you only cook this for about a half an hour in the oven. And so you really don't need to have um, two... You're like you want to have kind of smaller cuts of your potatoes because otherwise they won't cook through all the way um if you want to use a little bit larger like um like um what's the word i'm thinking of the um not russets the little heirloom potato potatoes why am i fingerlings. fingerlings yes sometimes you just want to cut them in half but you can get, like cook them for a minute in the oven first yeah so okay we'll do another little uh, i'm doing two chicken breasts right now for this and then we're going to add in a little bit of fresh parsley and i like peas in it i use frozen peas a lot of times in the winter they work um so well but i don't pre-cook them you can kind of see probably here they still have they're still pretty cold from the freezer and so um i just i feel like peas get overcooked which is why most people hate peas <laughs> i cook peas so um just put them in frozen they'll cook when they're doing their things just leave them alone Okay, so that's about it, and you can see right now that the texture of this is a little bit thicker than I would want, so I'm just going to add in a little bit more milk. You also, sometimes you want, want, want to add like equal parts of broth and milk, that's another way that you can do this. So put another little squirt in here. And So Anna, when did you first start making pot pies? Um, my mom used to make pot pies a lot when we were kids. So I don't I don't remember, but you know when I started making them for myself um, was when I lived in, I lived in London for a year, and I think something about being around the British all the time kind of inspired mm -hmm. me, and so mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Hello, love. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ironically, my husband was actually in um, uh, Britain at the same time that I was, although our paths never crossed, but we were we were about an hour away from each other for a whole year. <laughs> Wow. Shoot me for another 10. Wow. Okay. Um, it does. Right. Thank you to Napa Valley for bringing all of our lovely paths together tonight. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs>
<laughs> we just had a Russian New Year, so it's one of our dear friends. And what you have to do is toast every um, every few, well, very often throughout this meal. <laughs> and so uh, every time you cannot just say cheers, you have to have something meaningful and heartfelt every time. So. Like, that oh was boy, one of I love vodka. That all of us that brought us here together in this place today. It makes it so special. Um, okay. I'm about to need tortillas. <laughs> all right, good. Okay, so that looks pretty good. You can do it a little thinner if you want. That's pretty good. And then we're going to just grab our little pie plate here and pour it right in. Um, actually, I didn't check this for saltiness, so let me give it a try really quick. Mm, delicious, but it needs Ooh. a little salt. So we'll put a little bit of that in here. Mm, putting about a teaspoon. Oh, behave. So just to talk to our audience, it's nice to not salt things beforehand because you can choose to do it later, right? Yes. And especially because I did my chicken from scratch and it does have quite a bit of salt in it, I like to always wait and try it first to make sure that my salt is balanced. Yes. Always start gentle and then add a little bit more in because you can always add more to what you're working on. Okay, so we're gonna just pour this right into our shell. If you have a little bit too much, then you can um, leave it alone. Okay, that is really easy. Okay, I'm gonna move this here to the side. And what I would do next is, um, let me grab this real quick. Can you show that if off you to have, the camera? How does that look? Ooh, yeah, it's beautiful. Right here, can you see it? Wow. There you go. Can you guys see it there? Here, um, here, here comes the magic. Where's the I magic? don't need to do this right now. I'm, I'm going to skip this step. But basically, what we can do is um, puff pastry. It's super easy to make. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time. But if you, um, if you want to, you can just give it a quick roll with a rolling pin. You want to put a little bit of flour down, maybe parchment paper. It makes it so it doesn't stick on your counter. And then you'll just lay this right over the top. Um, and so it's really easy to do. And I'm just going to cheat with it a little bit at the moment. <laughs> and then what you'll do, just because my lovely audience is just going to try the filling separately. So <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to a little bit cheat on it. And um, what you'll do next is, um, let me grab a bowl. But would you, would you pinch the dough or would you cut I it would. off? Yes, yeah, so I'll show you with my okay. finished one what okay. I'll do when it finishes. But just to give you an example, you'll take an egg and you'll make a light egg wash with this. So mm. basically what you'll do is you'll crack your egg in here. And I have this little tiny whisk that I love. You can use a fork. <laughs> it was actually like, a, it actually was on top of a, a wedding gift probably. But I actually love it for like salad dressing. It's so tiny, but it's just the perfect size. That looks like and, a ratatouille um, whisk. <laughs> It is. It looks like a ratatouille. ratatouille. <laughs> but look, it's just the perfect, perfect, perfect one to use for something small like this. I, it looks like a joke, but I seriously use this all the time. I told you, I like my little ones where I feel like I'm using. I just like the way she whips it. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Did you see how she whipped it like that? So then you use a pastry so brush sexy. and just glide right over the top of this. Um, you can see even just right out of the package on this, um, it will kind of um, sort everything together. So if your puff pastry is at room temperature, that's totally fine. And um, so that's basically what we'll do with an egg wash. And then when it comes out of the oven, it'll look like this. So let me see. Gorgeous. Amazing. Okay, so it looks like this when it comes out of the oven. Four hundred and twenty five degree oven for how long? Yeah, so I'll um, put it in the D oven. Just cliff notes degrees. if you could. So if you look at your puff pastry box, kind of go by their instructions because your your filling is gonna cook a lot right here on the stove. Uh, most of the things don't need to cook for a long time. So exactly. go on the puff pastry. If you cook it too cold, like in the three fifty oven, it's not gonna rise properly. Exactly. So you wanna have a real warm oven. And then what I usually do is um, bunch up all the edges on the bottom and then I do a little trick with my fingers this way and go all the way around that ah. way. And that's how you get these cool little edges. See, they perfectly fit my fingers. <laughs> and then you also want to cut little slits in the top so that all the steam can escape. Otherwise, you'll get a lot of things dripping off the edges. But I'll put it on a cookie sheet uh, when I'm doing this at home. 
and and that's chicken pot pie. And we have one more thing. It'll be a quick one, I promise. <laughs> Does okay. it matter, um, Anna, does it matter if you put it in the middle of the oven or towards the bottom or towards the top when you bake Great it? Question. Yes, good question. Always in the middle. So if you have like the middle rack of your oven, um, always try to balance it not only in the middle um, top to bottom, but also in the middle front to back. So it gets the most equal. If you have a convection oven, it's going to help you out, but still always the center is always going to be your best. Okay, so the last thing we're going to make is... Um, a uh, chicken salad. Now, if you're vegetarian, how you would do this is with deviled, uh, like with um, hard boiled eggs, or you could also use, like there's um, vegetarian chickens like fried chick that you could use as well. So, um, I have some bits of chicken in here now. And in this case, I like to kind of shred them a little bit. Um, so I'll just pull them apart. You can do them a little bit even more finely than this if you would like to. And, then what we're going to add in here is um, we're going to add some mayonnaise, some mustard, and some celery. Um, I'm going to make a smaller batch to start. So this would be about the amount we would make if we were cooking for maybe one person. Um, or two. Hey, or two. Part of the <laughs> you, can use, case, you can use any part of the chicken at all. That's why I like to roast the whole thing because all every bit of the chicken you can use. Um, the bones you can save for your stocks. If you go to my um, backyard brunch page, Facebook backslash B brunch, um, I put up instructions yesterday for how to do the stock. What, what was that site again? Um, face, face yard, face yard, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, long day at work. Okay, Facebook backslash B brunch. Um, also on Twitter, you can follow me at um, Twitter slash backyard brunch. Okay, so we got our chicken here. And what we're gonna do is add in um, mayonnaise now. It's pretty easy to make a homemade aioli. We don't need to bother with it today. So I kind of like my best foods. <laughs> um, so I'm put in, um, we'll be kind of generous on that one. And that then, flavor. yes, that's gonna give it your creaminess. Um, certainly if you make it from scratch, that's gonna taste really well, really good as well. And, um, little one here. Oh, little knife. Okay, and then I like a little bit of horseradish. It gives it just a little zip and um, that's a, about a tablespoon, so it's a, it's a good little batch. If you have um, like a, a spicy mustard, then you maybe don't want to do quite so much of the horseradish. You might want to be a little bit um, less generous on that, but kind of up to you on, on what you like to do. But it gives it a kind of a, a nice Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> and okay. So, so now when we're you, add in a little mustard. When you buy horseradish, do you buy the root or do you buy the cream horseradish? I don't get the cream usually. I like the pure horseradish, if I can do that. Yeah. So this is our base, it's just these little three things. And um, then what we're gonna add in is a little bit of the flavor just to make it kind of crunchy and delicious. So I'm gonna set that aside and we're gonna add in some celery. When you use celery, um, you probably throw away all this leafy bit at the top. It actually is kind of like a parsley and it has incredible flavor. So if you would like to, you can just keep that right inside of it and it'll give it a really nice crunch, but it also um, just gives it incredible flavor. And then I like to use fresh dill. It's one of my favorite fresh, fresh um, herbs to use. You'll find that I use a lot of fresh herbs. I think the flavor is incredible. Um, fresh and dried both certainly have their own place in life. Um, dried work really good if you're roasting a chicken, for example, so that they don't get um, burned and uh, like a fresh herb would burn in that sort of a circumstance. But anytime you're cooking where it's going to be used kind of in a fresh way, fresh is always going to give you uh, just really remarkable flavor. And later this year we'll do us uh, classes just on ingredients. So how something I'm obviously really passionate about so <laughs> um, okay so we'll toss those in we used about a cup a half a cup of celery and about um, a good fourth a cup of fresh herbs too and then I would put in a couple pickles too I actually usually use homemade pickles um, but I'm out at the moment <laughs> it's not that time of year anymore so we'll put in a couple of these ones and that's great 
I can smell that soup over there. Can you guys smell the, the chicken yeah. soup? Yes, <laughs> wonderful. Oh, okay. <laughs> good, good, good strategy there. Okay, so we'll give these pickles a quick cut. And... Do the the, pick, the reason why you put pickles in is, is it because of the... Because they're crunchy acid. and delicious. And is it the acidity or, I mean, is it... They're salty, yep, yeah. yeah, and they also mm. have a little bit of vinegar in them as well. So um, they, they're going to give you a nice balance. And you can see I haven't really salted this yet either because my mayonnaise is salted, my mustard is salted, my pickles are salted. And so you definitely want to check it out before you just go in diving in with the salt and pepper. So look, at there you go. This one is, um, I could probably add even a little bit more chicken in here if you wanted, but I like it really fresh like that. Fresh. Yes. Mm. And then we're going to do <laughs> is serve it on a brioche bun. So, um, yeah. I really love the really soft bread. That's not, juice. where did you get that bun? If I'm behaving during the week, I do I some holy bread, but, <laughs> but we're playing we on the weekend, then we can't be <laughs> The people want to know the location on the bun, please. I like those uh, buns, I cannot lie. Oh, they're from, they're from uh, Bouchon. So, <laughs> Bouchon? Bouchon? They are, they are indeed. Okay, and so we'll just put our little chicken salad on top of here. And there you go. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. 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 Good vitamins, too. That's your salad. <laughs> all, all my people in here are going to be able to eat this in a few minutes. So um, I always love a lot of lettuce. I'm using a butter lettuce today, uh, which has a super soft, silky, not silky, but really velvety kind of texture. So it's not as crunchy as... Um, Kind of a head lettuce, or obviously, but or a romaine or something like that. Camera? Can you see that? Way up, way up high, like above the shoulder. It's good. There we go. Yeah. So that's your chicken salad sandwich. Um, you're putting all the mayonnaise and things inside your filling, so you don't really need to put that on the bread. You can do that, of course, if you want to, but kind of don't need to because it's in here. And that's how it goes. So let's take one final look at our soup, and then um, we're all set. Then you guys can try all the food. Everybody's a winner. Okay, so you can win. you guys see this at home? Let me tip it so that you can see inside. Oh! 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 Tell me you got that yeah, out there. Tell me we got that out there. No editing that out. Don't try this at home. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna try this a different way, really. Quick. Julie Child, let's drop back in. I have a better plan. <laughs> Chef, your hair looks amazing. Hey, this is live, guys. Woo! <laughs> this is live <laughs> she uh, looks amazing. Suits in 3D. I love a woman making mess. I do. I do. I do make messes. <laughs> but it's part of the fun. Okay, so here's our bowl, and we're gonna just um, put a little soup in here. Um, always start kind of in the center of your bowl and then pour in because um, I'm not doing such an awesome job at it at the moment. Mm -hmm. But that's going to help it so that you don't get all these messiness on the sides. Your hair, <laughs> and then I love to serve it with um, some like fresh cilantro and sour cream. Yes. So um, mm, you could just nice. toss some fresh cilantro in at the end mm. or kind of use it to garnish. I fresh. really love the um, you can actually use some of the cilantro while you're cooking it too, but I don't know. I just like to put a little bit in at the end. So we put a little bit of cilantro in here and a little bit of sour cream. Oh my. That's what I like to do. And then I would do maybe some avocado or something. Oh and my. that's how we would have soup. Nice. Oh, wow. Nice. And we have somebody said they like avocado here, so nice. we're going to eliminate that. So thank you again for joining us this evening to my wonderful audience. Any questions before we close? Mm -hmm. what, when, when is the perfect time for tortilla soup? Is it a main winter, course? I like it in winter. Okay. Winter and fall when it gets, starts to get a little bit yes. cool, but you can do that any time of the year. Um, thank you to our audience at home for joining us. Um, again, you can follow us on, on Twitter at Hashtag. <laughs> Hi, Simple. Company goodness. <laughs>